Hey there, home labbers and engineers. FE Engineer here. So uh, today we're going to do something pretty interesting. We're going to make an AMD card work like an NVIDIA card, and we're going to do it for stable diffusion. All right, let's go. So, okay, this is going to be a bit complicated, so make sure that you bear with me and pay attention. Number one, since we are using Windows, but since Rockham doesn't support all of the uh, AI libraries, we are going to need to install Rockham for Windows. Unlike Linux, this does not end up being 20 gigs. This ends up being like one gig. So it doesn't take very long. I would recommend that folks just simply download the installer and then launch it and follow along. Uh, there aren't very many options. Um, I think I just did a full install. It really did not have a lot to it and it should be pretty straightforward. But come over to the AMD page. There will be a link at the bottom of the video and go through the HIP SDK installer for Windows. So, okay, step one done. We got HIP SDK and so we have sort of Rock'em on Windows. Great. The next thing that you are going to do is come here and from Il Shiggy Tiger, make sure you grab this zaluda.zip and all you need to do is take it and unzip it into a folder. You should probably name this folder Zaluda or something like that, but effectively just unzip this zip file when you download it, put it somewhere, and then you should be good. Next, make sure that you download Get for Windows. Most people probably already have this, but effectively this Get for Windows, just hit download, follow through the prompts, download that. And the last of the things that you will need is Python. And in case anybody is curious, I am using Python 3.10.6. In order to find the specific version of Python, you can effectively just uh, look up Python downloads and I will have a link to this page and then you look for a specific release if you are doing 3.10.6 go ahead just hit download when you do download and install it there will be a little box that says add to path you want to make sure that box is checked now that we have most of the requirements out of the way you are going to go to your search bar on Windows and you are going to type in ENV. There's going to be an option that comes up to, that says edit the system environment variables. And when you click on it, it will bring up something like this. And then you will click on environment variables. And then down here under system variables, you are going to find the variable called path and then you will hit edit. Inside of there, you are going to add two entries. One is this hip path bin, and it will look exactly like this, and I will have effectively the text that you need in the video description. And then you will also add the spot where you put your zluda files. And all you need to do is hit new and then effectively wherever you put your zluda files, click up here in the bar, copy that and just effectively paste it in there. Once you do that, hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. And it should now be added to path. If you have any problems with this, you can always restart your machine in the off chance that for some reason it is not being picked up as being added to path, but that should be all you need to do with that for now. And with that, we are going to get clone and then the El Shiggy Tiger Stable Diffusion Web UI Direct Demo. Go ahead, hit enter. From inside of here, we are just going to run webui.bat. 
and this will take a minute so I will skip forward for you okay now that it finished installing and did all of its things okay great so now it has done a few things that we needed it to do and you can just shut that down for the moment now we are going to go into our files and let's look inside of Zluda test inside of this YouTube one and inside of Stable Diffusion Web UI Direct ML. The easiest thing that's going to be to do is go ahead and get a second file explorer. And what we're gonna do here, if this will behave, is we're going to come back to Stable Diffusion Test Zluda. These are our Zluda files. And this is the Stable Diffusion Web UI Direct ML. What we need to do now is come over to um, Now we're going to give automatic 1111 some of our special Zluda files. We're going to open up Venv, Lib, Site Packages, come all the way down to Torch. And if folks are curious, right now, the Torch that gets in installed is 2.2.0 CU118. So in the future, since this video will likely still be up, if it downloads a different one and you have problems, you may want to install this torch specifically. But we'll open up torch. We will go to lib. And inside of here, you will see a bunch of files. Specifically, we want to take this kublas DLL and copy it over. And we want to take cusparse.dll and copy that over. And then what we need to do is take the kublas64 underscore 11, go ahead and trash that, and cusparse64 underscore 11, trash that, and then take these ones that we just moved over and we are going to effectively rename them. So now we have a kublas 64 underscore 11. And now we have a cusp parse 64 underscore 11. Great. That's what we needed to do. We can close these out now. We should have all the things that we really need. And with that, we can just web UI dot bat dash dash use dash z luda so it started up without any problems and you'll see we have a safe tensors and we're just going to render an image of a girl on a bike fair warning the very first run with Zluda can be horrendously slow. So I am going to hit that. You will see nothing happening at all. Nothing. And that's okay. This will probably take 10, 15, or 20 minutes. It may even take longer. Even though nothing is happening, just let it go. Just walk away, go do something else for a little while, and that's literally what I'm going to do. So, okay. So you see I got 10, 12, 14 iterations per second. Not too bad. Second run, 13, 12, 13 iterations per second. No big deal. And this is using a safe tensors file, remember. This isn't using ONNX or anything. And those aren't too bad. But let's do some interesting things. I am going to actually open up my models. 
And these are the models inside of that YouTube one that I just did. And I happen to have some models over here that I can copy over. So okay, so I have a Stable Diffusion XL model and a normal Stable Diffusion 1.5 model. Okay, great. Let's reload our models, okay. This Animerge, this is just a random model that for some reason I have and I never got rid of it. Hit generate on that model, same thing. 10, 11, 14 iterations per second, great. And it generated a picture, no big deal. Okay, let's try an, a Stable Diffusion XL model. This was notoriously difficult to get running on Windows with automatic 11, 11 before. Okay, so we have an XL model now. Generate. And of course, XL models are always more difficult. Wonderful, it generated an image. Looks fine. Um, let's generate a different image though. So you'll see that it's working and it's running Stable Diffusion XL. So that's interesting. A house in the woods. Medieval. And again, this is still using Stable Diffusion XL. This is a good picture. So if people remember before, ONNX and Olive were great for some performance optimizations, but man, it really kind of cut down on some things. Questions I always got, how do I get DPM++ 2M Keras? Well, guess what? You've got it, along with all of the other samplers. Of course, all the normal things that you can do. And then the other thing is people got very unhappy about not having in-painting. So great, let's take a look at that. We're just gonna bump this scale way up. So I'm gonna cut out this tree. All right. Okay, you'll see I cut this tree out and I'm not gonna change my prompt or anything like that. Just gonna hit generate. And while it still did end up putting a tree back in there, you'll see it definitely changed the tree. And unlike previous iterations with ONNX and things like that, where the whole image would end up changing, this is now in painting properly. And it's because we aren't using anything crazy. We're just using Zaluda, which is basically mimicking a CUDA on our AMD. How cool is that? I think that's it, folks. This should, uh, this should wrap it up. This is how you use automatic 1111 in Windows with an AMD card and get all of the benefits effectively of running an NVIDIA card. And overall, running Stable Diffusion XL on my 7900 XTX, I'm still able to get five, six iterations per second, obviously, my performance is slightly lower than it was with ONNX, but for being able to do this on Windows, this is fantastic. And now, a handful of honorable mentions for things that, depending on how stuff works, you might need to do. You might need to go and update one of the files. So let's take a look at doing that. If you get an error talking about some sort of CUDNN status internal error, that is when you will wanna turn this off. Depending on your graphics card, you'll see I have the 7900 XTX, you'll see I get two green check marks. Some folks may not get two green check marks and most of them are the Radeon 6000 series. If you do not have two green check marks, then you will actually need to move some more files around.
if your graphics card does not have two green check marks and instead the hip SDK column doesn't show up correctly and has the red X, then you will need to follow these instructions and you will need to go to your where the hip SDK is installed, go into the rock blast directory. You're going to find something inside of there called library. You're going to rename it. You're going to download the files from this zip, open up that zip, and then drop the library from that zip into that rock blast where you took the library and renamed it. And then you will need to reboot your PC. And that's it folks. This may not be Rock'em on Windows, which is honestly what I was really thinking was gonna be the next things coming up, but this allows you to use your AMD card as an NVIDIA card, which is pretty interesting. So I hope you guys have a good time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching my videos, home labbers and engineers. I create and edit all of these videos on my own, so any likes and subscribes will massively help out the channel and allow me to continue creating content to help people. If you got value out of this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to be notified when new content drops. If there's something I've not covered but you would like to see a video on it, please leave a comment down below. And again, a massive thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great day.